Sisters, who brought you RuPaul's Drag Race and Million Dollar Listing. This is World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. From Hollywood, from Hollywood Boulevard, from the headquarters of World of Wonder, live ish, it's the Wow Report. Here we are. Uh, here we wow. are. Wow, right? <laughs> Shouldn't there be like applause from a live studio audience of oh, some kind? Only or? we had oh, one. Wow. <laughs> I am Tom Campbell, Chief Creative Officer here at World of Wonder. Wow. I am joined this week and every week by Club Kid turned best selling <laughs> author James St. James. Hey, James. Yeah. Hey, James. Um, I said I remember I went to NYU <laughs> with his old Club Kid pal, Lisa E. We were but we were all three of us in the dorms together. At, at, at Ruben. Ruben. At Ruben. Oh, and that how, voice you're yeah. hearing, it's yeah. not it's not Fenton Bailey. He's out making documentaries, changing the world. Is he? And filling in for him this week. We are so excited to have Alec Mappa. Hi, I'm uh, the only Asian person in Hollywood who wasn't at the Golden Globes yes. last oh. Sunday. Oh. Derek Chris stole your thunder. One. Sandra Yeah, oh. he did. Yeah. And they're both close personal friends, so I'm a little pushed about it, I'll be honest. <laughs> it, I'll be is honest the Asian with you. acting community very close here in um, Hollywood? Yeah, because you... usually, you know, we're about, we're like dogs uh, fighting over a bone. Usually they throw <laughs> out, you know, the Asian <laughs> part, and then we all kind of uh, vie for mm-hmm. it. There's that, and then there's the gay list. Of oh. like, you know, of like the assistant or the a principal or the judge or the person at the DMV. And usually at that call, it's me, Jack Plotnick, Drew Drogi, and Sam Pancake. <laughs> <laughs> All of our favorite people. Right, right. 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 It's like, oh, Jesus, who's going to get it this time? <laughs> round and round they go. Right, Where right. it stops, nobody knows. And I'm knows. like, you fuckers, I have a kid in private school. So. <laughs> oh, dibs, dibs. You are a dad and you're in, you're in a, 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 a loving relationship for how many years now? 17 years. Holy moly. 17 That's years. a thousand Gay years. Yeah, that gives us all thousand. hope, doesn't it? Yeah. That it, it can happen to any of us at any time. <laughs> it can happen to anybody. If it, it happened to me. For 17 years, that makes me go wow. But we're here to, to count down another wow list, right? We're here, as we are every week, to count down the top 10 things that made us go wow. wow. You're catching oh, up. I did it. I did it. I just got that. And we're going to jump right into it. Um, Al- I'm excited, but you can't tell because I had Botox recently. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Even on radio, you can tell you had yeah. Botox. Can't yeah. you? Just the, I, I hear the it. Slur. You hear it. Yeah. <laughs> you hear it. <laughs> all right. I'll like kick this off at strong. At number 10. Number 10. The Golden Globes. <gasps> I watch. I watch. It was unbelievable. I watch every year. Well, I'm I'm obsessed with the Golden Globes because of the history of it. Well, tell well, me more. well you know, the, it's um the Golden Globes is the Hollywood Foreign Press. It's a hundred people, right. and they're very odd, <laughs> lovely people. My neighbor across the street is a Hungarian woman. <laughs> who is an entertainment reporter for, I guess, for the Hungarian Inquirer. <laughs> and um, she goes to the junkets with like paprika chicken for George Clooney and or Angelina Jolie or Brad Pitt. And so I get all of her swag. Like she shows up with ball caps and like for um, the hangover, she had like this ice bucket, you know, for and sombreros and tequila. Like I get all her swag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the Hollywood Foreign Press... Originally, the Golden Globes was them, and one year, I don't know if you remember this, it was in the 80s, Pia Zadora was voted <gasps> I rem- star oh, lonely lady. No. of the year. Was it Lonely Lady? I lonely think it was. Lady. Yes. And I think we mentioned, that on every other, we mentioned that on every other show. Yes. Oh, I so, love me some Pia Zadora. So she, best actress. Yes, best actress, and everybody was like, Ma? <laughs> and it turns out her husband, her rich husband, <laughs> had, had taken everybody, all the Hollywood Foreign Press people, to Las Vegas for a week. Sure. And put them up, and so that tainted the um, Golden Globes and it went away for a while. Uh, Cut to like maybe 10, 15 years later, Dick Clark buys the rights. God bless Dick Clark. It it goes on again. He they send out all the invites. Everybody shows up, and it's like one of the biggest ratings winner ever. And it's back for good. And it's fun because people are drunk, of course. Drunk. We, people are get they, they drink. It's at the Beverly Hilton, mm-hmm. um, and everybody seems a little loosey goosey. Uh-huh. And the fashions are a little more fun than they are at the Oscars, where, yeah. it's, where it's more formal and everything like that. Right. Details. What did you think of this year's? Well, the red carpet, I just want to say that um, Jamie Lee Curtis Amazing. slayed. Amazing. She's turned into her mother. She's she's an ice goddess. She's Tilda Swinton is the, is the ice queen. Have yeah. you seen the meme where they say it's Anderson Cooper in drag? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh By the God. way, both those, that's not putting anyone down. I think no, Anderson Cooper in drag no, that is and not, Jamie Lee that's Curtis. That's not transphobic no, at all. that is full of Save love. Save those emails. <laughs> <laughs> I really went berserk over Timothy Chalamet. I think he can wear anything. I thought he was absolutely a Adorable. He could show up in a potato sack. He, I don't he was care. In that little harness. Yeah, yeah. I was most excited. He was in a harness. He was yeah, in, in like a little 
that Adam Rippon Hollywood. Yes, but this was yeah, a, this Tom was a beaded harness, so he one upped oh, Adam oh Rippon there. Gosh. But Adam's retweeted it or something. He, Adam got got you know a little Bitch social stole media. My look. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The big, the most exciting one for me was though when Sam Elliott walked up with Catherine Ross because that, uh, seeing a Catherine Ross sighting, all you oldsters out there, you uh, know the her, graduate. Ross, yeah, she's the girl in the graduate. Back when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Butch, Butch Cassidy and the, the sun Sundance came. Yeah. The swarm. The swarm. first Stepford Wives. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Just one of the great faces of the 70s yeah, and yeah. the 60s and 70s. And it was gorgeous to see her. faces of the 70s. Yeah. Kind of like, they, no, it was one of those, she had one of those faces where it didn't look like she had a couple, a lot of makeup on and the way she was filmed was in, was in a lot of natural sunlight. Yes. And yes. you could only be a stunningly beautiful woman. She was, she, like yeah, thank you. Great yes, natural thank woman. You. She, you and Connie Selica. <laughs> <laughs> and Allie McGraw. Allie, I always think of you as very sort of Allie McGraw-ish. Yeah, yeah. Are you saying that I can't <laughs> act? You need a cloche hat of something. <laughs> Love means never what, having um, to say yourself. Were sorry. you kidding aside just for a second, yes. Alex? Were you were you moved by the Asian representation this year? Absolutely, absolutely. Usually, there's one. So last year it was Hong Chow yeah. for um, um, downsizing, yep. which I saw on the plane, and she's amazing in that. So usually we get thrown a bone, you know. Usually right. there's like the one person of color who was like uh, the former cab driver who ended up kidnapping um, Tom Hanks on a boat and Captain Phillips, you know. It's kind of <laughs> like that. But this year we had trans people. We had a whole table full of them. I not know. Just one. They didn't win, but for Pose and Our Lady yeah. J, and they were all there, yeah. and it was. And Billy Porter showed up in a cape. Oh, so yes. fabulous! Yes, so fabulous. That like it pink was, lined. It, it was pink lined with a heel with kind of a Louis Couture's heel. Yes. That was very nice. Mm-hmm. I thought all the uh, all the women of Pose really kind of showed up and showed out. I did see yes. there was a bit of a controversy where um, like, someone was saying that Our Lady J, uh, her outfit, they, they trashed her outfit and put what? it on the worst <gasps> dress list. And then she came back and said, look, I'm a six foot two trans woman and the designers are not you know, making gowns for me. I asked, yeah. I had to do- And, and I, this is a picture of Alice and Janney, not me. <laughs> so uh, but, first of all- But she went on to say say that like, you know, that she had to take what she could get and this is what she could get. And she and it turned into cruel. this whole it thing. It was an emerald Green, it was gorgeous. Perfection and she with her red beautiful. hair. She mm-hmm. was gorgeous. Yeah. No, it was it was really sad that she felt she, she had to the writers and directors. I think it was like I think it was like Entertainment Weekly that put her on the bottom. Um and she she did a whole It's transphobic. It's really transphobic. Yeah. It's but do you think um, going back to the Asian question, do you mm-hmm. think that this is a, a trend or is it was it an anomaly? Or I don't is know. it gonna I'm not ha- holding my breath? I mean, how many years was it between Joy Luck Club and Crazy Rich Asians? But have you been getting an uptick in you know, auditions? I don't really and go up for Asian parts anymore. You know. I go up for Alec mm-hmm. Mappa parts. I mean, right. when they yeah. need somebody to like, how you know, dare make a whole I bunch please of faces. Take out all of that. <laughs> You know, when, I worked with Jennifer Coolidge on Two Broke Girls last year, and her famous quote is, I make a lot of funny faces, which is really good for comedy. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a master class in comedy, yeah. thanks to you, yeah. Jennifer Coolidge, Alec yeah, Mappa. Yeah. So glad you're here. Me too. We're, we're going to keep counting down. Um, James a commercial Saint, break. You're so not, fancy. Not yet. James St. James. Oh. We, we're, there's too much content. We can't, oh, okay. go, we can't stop for commercial all now. Right, all right. I'm going to number nine. It's James St. James. Number nine. Uh, okay, you guys, I was one of the 50 million people who watched Bird Box over uh, Christmas vacation. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Lots of spoilers, careful, spoilers careful. coming up right I, I, now. Oh, really? Yes. Have you, have you? I think Tom is the only person on the planet who hasn't watched it. I'm the other person on the planet who hasn't watched it. Stop it. You're kidding me. Thank you. I had too many house guests this Christmas. It felt too meme It felt like I had to stay away from it because it was like the whole world was going in one place and I had yeah. to counterbalance the earth. Yeah, there was um, so much about it on Instagram and so many kind of jokes the next day that I was like, when I feel like I'm being told to like something or told to do something, yeah. I have the opposite reaction. It becomes repellent to me. That's us. Okay. Well, I am going to give you, uh, I'm going to give you the sort of the recap right here and try and b- b- bring you in and hope that hopefully you'll want do to watch this. Do we have to say spoiler alert for people driving listening to us right now? Well, no, yes. this, I'm just Don't telling you. Don't give away the end. No, no, I'm just giving you the setup. I'm just going to g- yeah. give you All the right. setup. Yeah. Right. Sandra okay. Bullock gave the setup on, on television recently. Well, I'm no Sandra yes. Bullock. Okay. Well, you're but, my Sandra Bullock. Uh, yeah. Mine too, <laughs> to be honest. Okay. So it's the end of the world. It's the apocalypse. Okay. Sure. Yeah. And so there's some entity. Yeah. There is some entity that has come down to Earth mm-hmm. and is causing people to go berserk. And mm-hmm. when when you see it, when you look at it, mm-hmm. you commit suicide and you stab your eyes out and you it, slit your throat. It, it's you, called Koreatown at Rush Hour. <laughs> <laughs> 
You just want to kill yourself. <laughs> I yeah. live in Koreatown. I believe me. Yeah. It's very crowded. Yeah. But we don't know whether it is the wrath of God. We don't know whether it's aliens. Uh-huh. We don't know whether it's a supernatural right. being, right. whatever. So Sandra Bullock is a pregnant woman mm. and she finds a house, a safe house that is filled with people and they've they blacked out the windows right. so they don't look outside. And in that house is John Malkovich, who's like a Trump supporter. <laughs> the people they say have, I look like. <laughs> yeah, and you act like him too. Really? Yeah. Um, Maybe I was thinner. Mm. Uh, Dumplin is there from the Netflix show Dumplin. Oh, yeah. I love does that. Does she sing a Dolly Parton movie. song? She does. She does. She breaks into Dolly Parton. That was the sweetest movie. Uh, Jackie movie. Weaver is there, the great Australian actress who won I the love Oscar Weaver. for, yeah, for uh, uh, Animal uh, Kingdom. Yes. yes. And, uh-huh. um, uh huh. Machine Gun Kelly is there uh-huh. for some reason, which makes no sense. Wow. The, the rapper. Wow. Um, B.D. Wong is there. Wow. Um, this sounds a little bit like Big Brother, Celebrity Big Brother, too. It, 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 it turns into that because. Snooki is there. <laughs> Strangest thing. But the the hot Travante Rhodes from Moonlight yeah. is there. Oh, my God. Oh. He is so handsome. Oh, he's so, so handsome. Then, inexplicably, it's five years later. Oh. Okay. Time flies. Yeah, it really does. And here's the thing that drives me bananas. And, and we started we, this five years ago, actually. Uh, we, we can talk about this. Blake and I can talk about this. Right. Because t- there, um, Sandra, re- find, to survive, there's a safe house that is uh, miles and miles away in the middle of nowhere. Always. And to get there, she has to take the two children on a rowboat down <laughs> a river, 49 hours blindfolded, uh, and the kids can't talk. And so she's on a river for 49 hours. You can't talk as well as it like the quiet place? Like they'll find you even if you can't so like, yeah, It dark turns place. Quiet, dark place. <laughs> so she has to go down. Okay. But she has to go down this river. And she, and she can't. There's rapids. There's, okay. There's, of course. Okay. Right. Of course. Yeah. And she has to navigate the rapids. She's Eliza on the ice at this point. <laughs> for some reason, she stay, She manages to row perfectly in the center of the mm-hmm. river the entire of course. fucking time. Of course. Never hits a rock, yeah. never runs yeah. into the sides. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For 49 yeah. hours. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah. 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 She probably would be really good at that board game operation. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Take out wrenched <laughs> ankle. <laughs> That's exactly but what it is. But don't touch the thigh. If you've already said this, I so apologize. But why can't she, why does she have to keep her eyes covered? Because if you look, at the, if monster, you look at the monster, you'll go, you'll go you'll crazy go and commit bananas. suicide. You'll see your worst nightmares realized. Right. Yeah. But yeah. can't, it, couldn't there be some part of you that goes, it's not, it's not real. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> if you're evil. I mean, come on. No, so the cynical. thing is, here's, mm. here's, here's, here's the thing. If you're evil, you can look at the monsters and survive. So the bad guys, they're bad guys all around uh, that are that are oh, have their eyes open uh, and they're going around trying to get people to look at the monster. Uh, oh, I never uh, understood that. Well, here's okay. Because I would say I'm not really at a Dave and Buster's in Corona. That's just how, that's my worst nightmare, but it's just a nightmare. It's not real. But now there was an article in Gizmodo that suggested that the the whole movie is um, a metaphor for Trump. And first of all, they said, and then they said that it's a metaphor for social media and mm. that the social media is the monster. And if you spend too much time on the monster looking at the truth, you go crazy. I, it's some, some sort of a weird thing. But they said huh. that the evil people who could look at the truth and still go on were the trolls like Russian trolls because remember mm-hmm. it started in Russia yes. oh. so there's a whole blah, 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 blah. it's like it's like an onion Tom it has so <laughs> many layers and then it makes you cry and then it makes you cry um, can I just ask yeah uh, do you recommend it well it's no no you feel like it you feel like it's recommended no, I do, I do because it's, it's bad shit bananas it's ridiculous you get you are so frustrated yeah. you spend the entire time yelling screaming at the, at the, at the, screaming. At, why yeah, yeah it, I love that kind of thing it's, if can you I, like the quiet place you'll like this I walked out of the quiet place so the uh, this at the public service part of our program is a lot of people are wrapping their eyes and doing the bird bo- uh, bird box challenge. challenge. Yeah. And I say, do it. Die. This is evolution. Survival of the fittest. Is it, Survival what, of the wait, fittest. Wait, this is the first I've heard of it. Oh, people it, are you, walking outside with the thing, seeing the thing, crossing eating, the street and stuff. Are they eating stuff. Tide Pods while they're doing it? Not they, yet, but no, I, yeah, but I recommend I did that suggest, I did suggest that we take the season 11 queens, uh, blindfold them and set them on loose on Hollywood Boulevard and see how right. how many survive. Right. Right. It's it's it's, Sounds dangerous. it's 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 nature thinning it may- out the herd. <laughs> exactly. Is what it is. All right, guys, we're running out of time. I'm getting this from time. Blake, okay, which is very important. Right. So we're going on to number eight. Number eight. Um, I had the great pleasure over the holiday because we really haven't seen each other since the holiday to watch the documentary that aired on CNN <gasps> called Love Gilda. Oh my God! Yes. And you know, Gilda Radner, Saturday Night Live. <sighs> yeah. Um. We're of us. We're all about the same age. Yeah. I don't want to drag yeah. you guys up no, with me, no, no, but no, we lived through the no. '70s and the original Saturday Night Live, and how, and yeah. I forgot, having lived through it, how 
brilliant yeah. and funny yeah. and sunny yeah. she was. And just, what, yeah. yeah, with a breath of fresh air she was on television. Yes. And how beautiful she was. I didn't remember yeah. at the time she was beautiful, but she was. She yeah. was. Yeah. And, but she wasn't vain and she was, you know, it was no. the 70s when women didn't do all of she that. She was beautiful. She had an odd beauty about her. She yes. wasn't conventionally beautiful, but she would smile that big smile and just you melt your heart. I remember seeing um, Roseanne, Rosanna Dana for the very, very first time <laughs> on Weekend Update. Yes. And and thinking that was the funniest thing I'd ever seen. <laughs> and then seeing the movie version, Gilda Live. Yeah. Yes. And just kind of being a kid in San Francisco, going to the Castro Street Theater. The double feature was Gilda Live and Bette Midler in Divine Madness. Oh my God. And as a little, if you weren't gay before, right, as you I, were gay. As a little gay kid, I was like, that's where I'm headed. <laughs> you know, just like, yeah. Your dreams will come you, true. And they all come true. Yeah. When, yeah. when they were showing the, the bits and pieces of it, when she started singing, honey. Darling, touch me, me with, with your, your eyes. Clothes, clothes on. Clothes yeah, on. Yeah. Did you start? Did you get tears in your yeah, eyes? Because yeah. oh, I hadn't thought of that song in yeah. 40 years. Yeah. And I think it's I think it's successful. People don't know her because they should know her. Yeah. yeah. And of course, her life was cut short by ovarian cancer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But That's there, the there, was, line. there was not a bigger star on the planet from yeah. 1975 to 1980. Right. And she did. Um, For uh, you kids listening out there, it would be the equivalent of Kristen Wiig. Yes. Yeah. Somebody that beloved, like yes. that, the, somebody like like because Kristen Wiig had such a huge run on yes. Saturday Night yeah. Live, where she was like the Lorne Michaels Golden Girl. Yes. But this was at the advent of Saturday Night Live. Like people tuned in every week because she had so many different characters. She had Baba Wawa. She had Roseanne Roseanne Dana. Emily she did Emily Latella. Uh -huh. She did Patty Smith. Yeah. Oh, Patty Smith. Smith. Yeah. Candy Candy Slice. Slice. She yeah. did um, Lisa Loopner. Yes. Yes. She did Debbie Duty, which was like the equivalent of the, like the female uh -huh. Howdy Duty. She um, also said. Yeah. Which I I love because of the seventies. She kind of, you know, it was a it, sex wasn't a big hang up. She 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 sort of had a she was with Martin Short when she was in Canada. She, Canada. she did Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, and John Belushi. Yeah, well, it, it was the seventies. It was the yeah, seventies. Yeah, she it was, was a, eating yeah. all of them. Which I yeah. kind of miss that. Yeah, I do too. I just did a movie with uh, Jane Curtin that comes oh! out in August, and she had a tale to tell about that time. But you know, but, Jane Curtin, yeah. Thirty Rock is one of my favorite yeah. shows of all time. No, yeah. Not Thirty Rock, thir Third Rock from the Sun. I yeah. love. I could watch yeah. that. And the other interesting context for today is Saturday Night Live has always been. Until recently, it's always been very male behind the scenes mm -hmm. and guys fought. Mm -hmm. And somehow, in this very beginning, Gilda was the first one they hired, and she shined brighter yeah, than she was the breakout the boys star in, in yeah. a world that was not being hospitable right. to female comedians. Right. And you know, even in the, in the 80s, when um, she wasn't quite as hot, she had that great love affair with Gene Wilder, and they married. Gene and it was, Wilder. And it goes into that others. love life, yeah. and it goes into her, 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 her battle with cancer in a way. I do not like, I don't watch medical shows because I don't want to see people die on TV. Right. It's such a beautiful, uplifting message that Gilda. Gilda lived and passes on in this documentary. Love Gilda available, you know, through watching it on they CNN. Is it on CNN? It is, is it on CNN. Oh, yeah. it's like they're repeating it on yeah. CNN Go. CNN Go. CNN Go. Okay, you can okay. watch that and Blackfish and feel really terrible. Speaking about the of wow. Go, we have to take a break. Quick, quick break. Oh, before we do, the way that we trick viewers into staying tuned over the commercial How break. How do we do that? We do a little trivia question. Okay, and we don't tell them the answer Ow. until we get back. You're so clever. <laughs> You're so clever. Blake, what do we got? So four actresses have won two Golden Globes for acting in the same year. How many can you name? In the same year? Uh, yeah, like they won two. Like, so, like supporting actress and actress? Right. Okay. Four. Wait, wait. Right. Four it, actresses have won two different awards in, in the, the same, same year. Golden right. Globe. It can be name one. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, I can. No, no, okay. Wait, wait, and then wait, remember, the, remember the hold format? It. Now we're going to take a little commercial. Okay. We'll be right back and we'll get the answer to that and so much more. You're listening to The Wow Report on Radio Andy Sirius XM. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. We're back. It's the Wow Report uh, here on Radio Andy Series XM. Uh, we are here, Tom Campbell. I'm here with James St. James. Oh and we are so, so, so excited to have the funniest man on earth, Alec Mappa. That's right. Hi, Andy. I haven't seen you in a long time. You want to hear my weird Andy Cohen story? I don't know. Okay. So we were we were both on the Tonight Show. Oh. It was uh, back in the Leno Tonight Show. And oh. the guests were me and Andy Cohen and um, Melissa McCarthy. And I wanted to say hi to Melissa McCarthy, but her whole team sure. and her whole family. Sure. was in the room and I was like there's no way I'm you know and I so I came off and you're walking down the hallway and there's doors on either side and I passed by Andy Cohen's door and he said hey Alec Aww. great job and I said thanks Andy and he goes how are you how's your husband I said he's great and he goes how's your son and I said he's wonderful and well we caught up and then blah 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 and then I went back to my dressing room and I left and then just as I got to my rest dressing room I realized I'd never met Andy Cohen before <laughs> that's well because you're a public figure but he like knew everything <laughs> 
And Real, he's like, he knows he everything. He, is he was Andy. like the Wizard of Oz. It was <laughs> kind of like, what was that about? He's listening to us right now. He's <laughs> watching <laughs> us. He's like Santa. He's oh watching us right gosh. now. He's when, you, when you're he sleeping. He has a dossier on you exactly. at home. Oh, probably. <laughs> we um, we uh, took a break. We, before the break, we uh, uh, Blake challenged us with a qu- trivia question. Blake, please repeat the question. Yes. So there are four actresses that have won two Golden Globes in the same year for acting for different roles. Mm-hmm. Can you name them? I'm going to say that one of them would probably be um, uh, Meryl because she probably wins all the awards okay. all the time. Meryl okay. Streep. I would say. Oh, go, go ahead. I'm going to say Jessica Lange. I was, oh, was, was going to say Jessica, Jessica Lange. Lange. For, yeah. for the year that she, for Tootsie and Francis. 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 Yeah. What do you uh-huh. have? Um, you can do the same uh, one. Uh, Jessica Lange. Pia Zadora, I believe. <laughs> oh, that's always a good okay, answer. Okay, t- uh, four. Okay, four. It was actually who, Sigourney who, who, Weaver in 89. So my friends in New York are Sigourney for, Weaver. For, for <laughs> Gorillas in the Mist and Working Girl. Okay. Oh. oh, that's good. Joan Plowright. In eight, 93 for Enchanted April and Stalin. I never would have known that. Never would have figured that. Helen Mirren for The Queen and oh. Elizabeth I in 2007. I remember oh. she was. And Kate Winslet in 09 for Revolutionary oh, Road and The Reader. So Jessica Lange wasn't any no. of those. No. And Blake shuts us down. I was going to go with mom is giving the answers. You guys know what you're wow. talking about. All right, let's pick up the uh, countdown Devastated. of the top 10 things that make us go wow. wow. With number seven, Alec Mappa. Number seven, tidying up. On the Netflix. I've read a little bit about this. I have not seen it. It is the most, uh, first of all, I'm always kind of like, you know, again, when I'm being told what to do, I'm like, yes, you're a rebel. Tidying Up is a show about the Japanese art of tidying up, and it's hosted by this Japanese tidying up expert named Marie Kondo, who is about, she's like a fairy. Do you remember those Mothra movies where the (laughs) tiny little ladies were like, She looks just like that. She can fit in the palm of your hand. She might be so, here. No, yes, she be some here. people say that she's very soothing. Other people say that she's the most annoying woman no, on the planet. No, she's very soothing. Okay. And, and she's all about like... Her philosophy in tidying up isn't about cleaning your house. It's that all of your possessions should spark joy. Right. So she does a meditation at the very beginning of the, of the thing where she, she kneels and she's silent and she greets your house silently in a very Zen Buddhist way. Mm-hmm. And one of the first exercises she does is she makes you take every bit of your clothing and build a pile on top of your bed. Every single stitch of clothing. And then you, you, take, you take a piece of clothing and you say, this makes me happy or yes, this makes or, me or, or this is like this doesn't um, do anything it doesn't do anything for me anymore and then if it doesn't do anything for you anymore or if it has sentimental value but you've moved on or i was wearing that when i was getting divorced or whatever you you hug that piece of clothing and you say thank you and then you put it away you say thank you next Wait, thank, thank you thank, thank you, you. Next. Uh-huh. yes yes very ariana grande and then she has a method for how you fold the things and put them away that is Astonishing! Like my bedroom closet and my drawers now look like a, like Barney's. But wait a minute! If you have something that it has nostalgic value, mm-hmm. but it's not doing anything for you now, do you get to keep it, or do you do you have to throw it away? Do you have to say that's goodbye the, to that, it? That's the thing about it. Like she does not force you. Like if they said, "I don't want to let this go," she's like, "Don't keep it." Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But you have to do this with every single book you own, every single yes. sweater you she, own. And she has a method for books, for photographs, for sentimental objects, for photographs. Objet d'ar. And you feel by just watching the show, you're able to do this. You, you wouldn't need to hire it. her. I did do this. I did do and this. And your life is. And my it's ruined me because now. <laughs> you're now, doing the wow the, report yeah, now. Yeah, no, now Things it's, have it's, it's ruined me. It's like it's turned my entire house into the Dewey Decimal System. If something is out of place, I'm like, what is going on? Oh no! Yeah. Well, but the wait only- a minute. Wait, hold up. But, but when you get rid of something, if you've gotten rid of something, I'm sorry. No, you're good. Yeah. You're good. You're good. How dare you stop me from asking Alex questions? All right. Um, uh, <laughs> if you got rid of a picture or something like that and you yeah. regret it later, are you mad at Marie for making you get rid of probably, it? Probably. Okay. You, probably. You, you have no regrets. We'll do, I have not we'll had that experience. We'll do a follow-up in a year. <laughs> 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 we have to yeah. move on. I'm sorry, yeah. James. Excellent question, by I'm the way. Watching Excellent tidying question. Tidying up on Netflix with Marie Kondo. All okay. right, streaming yeah. now. Wow. All right. This may, be, Even though it's in the middle of the list, this may be the most important story of the week. Number six, James St. James. Number six. Oh my God, you guys, The Masked Singer. Have you watched The Masked Singer? Oh, I watched it last night. Holy crap. Have you watched it? <laughs> uh, you right. watched it. I, you, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm curious about who, the, who what kind of singers do they For all we know, Alec Moppet is competing in The Masked Singer. That's, right. that's, that's right. Yeah. You guys, this is the best show in the Spoiler history alert. of television. 
up there with RuPaul's Drag Race Million Dollar Listing and Dancing with Dogs. And strangely okay? enough, it looks like a Japanese show. It looks well, like a Japanese show. Okay, game but show. here's the thing. Yeah. Because it is a South Korean show. I knew it. Okay. And it started, what happened was, is last summer, there was a viral video that went around. Mm -hmm. And it was because it showed it um, from the, the South Korean version. And there was a singer, he was a poodle, and he was singing, and it was gorgeous. And he took the mask off, and it was Ryan Reynolds, who just happened to be in South Korea and just happened happened to stop by and sing okay and, and the audience went wild and everybody in south korea was crying and throwing themselves on the ground I, and they I couldn't believe it this. it is unbelievable to watch because just like nobody was expecting it it's all these you know south korean local celebrities and all of a sudden it's fucking ryan reynolds hmm. which makes you think that the show was probably already bought here and already in production and this is probably the marketing how they got it i love how simple huh. you are but keep going it's huh. true obviously because that's yeah. how they get you <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah so anyway so the the, the way it's <laughs> <laughs> I love Alex. Is, there, there are six celebrities who come on and okay. sing. Okay. Right. And, and they're, they're not necessarily singers. No, no, no. They're, 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 they might be famous authors. They okay. might be famous athletes. Right. We don't know. Okay. But they come out in these elaborate club kid K-hole fantasy okay. plushy porn. Right. I mean, it right. is just fabulous. Right. right? And the Author two Tony Morrison. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to get to that. Because Dick Cheney. Dick Cheney. Because they, they come out and there's two Padma of them. Lakshmi. me. <laughs> You guys can keep going. <laughs> We're enjoying this thing. I'm listening to the Go ahead. So, so the two of them compete, and then the audience votes one uh, one to go on and one to go off stage, right? So there's six comp comp competitors, <laughs> and by the end, there's three people in the bottom, and then one person gets unmasked per episode. Huh. The audience, so we don't know, what? right? So... Um, the first episode, there's a peacock who comes out and he says they have a little package beforehand in which they talk in weird voices and give you clues. And oh. he says, I was a child star and your mother probably had my poster on her wall. And now I am in Vegas and blah, 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 blah. blah. And it just goes on and on and on. And then he sings and it's obviously Donny Oz. Yeah. 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 I guess. Or Ricky Martin. or Because the, the hmm. voice is sort of no, I looked Who's up the free? hype. Ricky it's or Donny? Who's free? Don Donny. Mm. <laughs> I'll says, take it. It says the person's height before they come out, oh. and I looked it up, and oh. it's totally because okay. okay. there, okay. there's no chance of like that's Peter Dinklage. It's just right. 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 I knew it. Well, and there's someone who's saying too that the celebrities aren't even in the outfits, and that the voices were all pre-sung. Oh, that's and not hundred percent. You know, that's not fair. And then fair. when they come out to be, and then they just bring the celebrity out to be unmasked. Yeah. But anyway, the, there's a unicorn who might be Paris Hilton or Rumor Willis or Tori Spelling. We don't okay. know. Because I was wow. thinking it was Tori. I, it might and be, but Tori can't sing too. like that. I don't know. Tori, that was really. So we sing. have to figure out what Tori's singing voice would sound yes. like. Well, there, the lion. You know who I totally think it is. Well, that's Rita Ora. Oh, I thought it was Jillian Hervey. Who's Jillian Hervey? Uh, I thought it was Marky, I thought it was yes, Marky she, Post from Night Court. Who has been on RuPaul's Drag Race, and she's the lion. And you know her, like, singing group is, like, the lion something. Uh, okay. All well, right. here. But the, the, the problem is, is that the one that was unmasked the first episode was some football player that I'd never heard of. Yeah. And it was sort of like like a little bit of a disappointment because yeah, you're, you're thinking like, it's, you know, so exactly. And as the, they're doing it, the judges are talking mm -hmm. and they're all saying, oh my God, is it Madonna? Do you think it's Brad Pitt? Um, do you think, do you think it's Lady Gaga? Hopes, right. And of course, is it the Pope? <laughs> no, it's Debbie, it's Debbie Gibson. Yeah. It's someone from Belle Biv DeVoe. Uh, is right? that Debbie like, Reynolds? No, she passed. No, she passed <laughs> yeah. away. Yeah, well, that's exactly yeah. the kind of conversation yeah. is and so <laughs> they need to have some a-listers on the show they need a Katy perry if it's going to survive right, right it's gotten a lot of hype right now yeah. but if it keeps being yeah. these z-listers yeah. it's yeah. not going to survive it's like that uh, old uh, roast saying uh, this isn't a who's who this is a who gives a shit <laughs> yes so you're in you're I, staying for the whole in. time I'm totally wow. yeah. you know the celebrities are totally wow. not in those costumes you know yeah. they, just, they just get i honestly thought it was them and i honestly thought they were singing live but then apparently i think know. that's wrong i think that's cheating yeah, I think that's but how cheating. are you going to get a Lady Gaga to be, you know, f two weeks on a, on a on a set? You don't give her the Golden Globe, and you say, "Baby, you need this." Yeah, you need this. This is you, this is your big chance to stay relevant. <laughs> Gaga, your best friends won't tell you. We will. Yes. you have to do two weeks on the mass Singer. This is really what's going to make you. By the way, I'm rooting for Lady Gaga for the Oscar Slam. Okay, thank you, James, for bringing us the most important story of the thank week. Thank you. Thank you. I am now going to move down to number five. Number five. Daryl Dragon. Oh, Rest no. in perfection. Now, I'm shocked to know, and I know we're oldies, that some people don't know who Daryl Dragon is. What? How? Who? Daryl Dragon God damn is the captain 
is the captain of the Captain and Tennille. Love will keep us together. Muskrat, Mus- muskrat love. love. Muskrat Susie. Do muskrat that to Sam. me one more yep. time. Yep. Yeah, yeah better once. shop around. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have a very personal connection. Let's I was hear it. I was a teeny bopper. Mm-hmm. They 1975. Love will keep us together. Written by Neil Sedaka. Was it come having come back? Was a time. song that took over the world. There's and you listen to it now, and it's still really catchy. It's a great song. You would, we didn't hear sounds like that. It was no. synthesizer yeah. on synthesizer. Dun, Tennille, dun, 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 Tony Tennille has one of the most underappreciated voices. Big voice. Big she's voice. a big voice. It's big Southern. Texas lady. It's Czech. She's smiled yeah. by Emma. Yeah. And, and she, the best and, hairdo on the planet. Yeah, not only that, not only was it the I'm biggest sorry. No. What, the biggest song <laughs> on the planet, <laughs> everybody had that haircut. My mother had that My haircut. Mother had that haircut. It's the Vidal Sassoon, uh-huh. she said, and it was like the bowl cut. It was mm-hmm. it was perfect. Perfect. And and it worked and she kept yeah. and she has it today. Yeah. She's yeah. a smart thing. She's smart bitch. Oh my gosh. Well, it was, now, Bonnie Franklin had it too. Bonnie and, Franklin um, and Dorothy uh, Hamill. Dor- yes, sort of Dor- had a version. And, the, and Jillian, did we decide? Yes. yes. And Jillian and, Jillian. and uh, Stacey Steubing, the one who was the daughter on it's the sort of Once boat. you have a haircut, <laughs> nothing <laughs> yeah. else yeah. works. Yeah. Nothing yeah. else works. Yeah. But this is the thing. They were like, they had a TV show. They had a, they had a summer replacement that variety program. That was really bad. Mm-hmm. But, and I've told you this before, but it's like, I was kind of aware in junior high that ratings mattered. So I stood up in my Mrs. Thurlow's social studies class in eighth grade and I said, everybody, the Captain Snow show is not doing well in the ratings. Will oh my you God, please you watch tonight? <laughs> I have some very you important have news. You a bigger platform now. I have important news. <laughs> a tiny bit yeah, bigger. Yeah. It's a pretty big class. The Captain and Tennille are in danger. Yes, <laughs> yes please help. And I love I was their, like that, but with Shields and Yarnell. I love, I love their music. Shields and Yarnell. I love and Tony their Orlando albums. And Dawn. People, there was this, there's a great story, anecdote about how Karen Carpenter and Tony Snow were both in A&M Records mm-hmm. and they were both some, two of the biggest recording artists of the 70s yes. and toward the end of the 70s when their contracts were expiring they left one day and Sid Vicious had the parking spot that they used to have. <gasps> and they're like, our time has passed. Oh. But the last hurrah was Do That To Me One More Time, a song that Tony wrote. And the thing about their songs that people made is they were so sickly. I love, love will keep us together. Mm-hmm. You know, but they, all- were, they, they were sort of made fun of by the yes, cool kids. Yeah. But it turns out three years ago, she divorced the captain. And she said in a book that I'm now reading <laughs> that he was cruel to her their entire marriage. Oh, no. So no, it, it makes me listen to them all over again with a new uh, appreciation oh. that her fantasy of what love could be yeah. was, it was not at all what their life was she was oh. like she was like Tina with Ike and sometimes i think cuz i get really emotional in my car listening mm-hmm. to beautiful songs mm-hmm. and like but i have no desire or capability to love another human being so i think that tony and i both just love and music and and live in a dark space on earth what did i lose everyone <laughs> like, does anybody want to pull over no, come does back. anybody want to pull their come car back. over and just hey, to bring it back with me to, to bring it back <laughs> does anybody want to join me in the fetal position <laughs> no, as I, I eat a box of crispy i love a pizza i love <laughs> the beauty i love how Songs seem to capture the essence of love. Yes, yes, just yes, that moment, does. that spray, that the sk- idea of and love. Like, oh, yeah. And 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 yeah. I've had that feeling. It doesn't yeah. last. And yeah. I love that yeah. it lasts. In like songs. the closest thing I've had to that experience recently is the Gaga um, "I'll Never Love Again." Yes. Yeah. That yes. is that is like that Kick is the me. new breakup song forever. An elephant yeah. stood on my chest yeah. during that. Yeah. Six Unbelievable. Sequence. All right, now that I brought everyone down, wow. it's time to take a break and think about your own inevitable death. Uh, <laughs> before we go, it might Blake, be today. Our millennial producer, who I forgot to thank you for doing our uh, hosting our shows Hi. over the holiday, sure. our clip shows, and thank you for coming up with uh, a, another uh, trivia question for yeah. the panel. Do you know how uh, Captain got his name, Captain? I do. Okay, but we're gonna answer that question and more as we continue the countdown on the Wow Report. Don't go away. This is Radio Andy Series XM. You guys, you're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. All right, we're back. You're listening to the Wow Report on Radio Andy Series XM. It's Tom Campbell. I'm here with James St. James and our millennial producer Blake, and we are beyond privileged and excited and giggling and laughing to have Alec Mop of the Wow. Beyond privilege. Beyond privilege. Yeah, white privilege. White privilege. Oh. I'm feeling very white privilege. Thanks, Alec. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, um, the show's You're just over. Skating through let's, life. let's put on. Let's put on the field with John Hill. Roll it. Um, <laughs> we were carrying on the top ten things that made us go wow before the break. Blake asked us the question about the captain you know because daryl what dragon just passed away uh-huh uh how did the captain get his name the captain um that was um tony Tennille's safe word <laughs> <laughs> captain very I bet that could be yeah. true captain was he like a captain in the navy or something i think i know the answer what? he used to before the captain he used to play keyboards and tour with the beach boys and he wore that captain's hat so they called him the captain really? they called him captain keyboard 
Captain oh, Keyboard. Oh, damned. I had no He's idea. He's a very talented musician. The captain. Anyway, rest in perfection, Gerald Drain. He never sang and he got top billing. He that could, that do, says the do, whole do, relationship do, do, right there. Do, do, He's so do, handsome. He no, really he was, was really cute. He had those yeah. big eyes. <laughs> yeah. And his, oh. his father was a famous conductor. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And he was withholding, and that makes us love men more, right? Yeah. 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 There you go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's keep moving on. Speaking of withholding, <laughs> Alec Mappa, number four. Number four. Um, I'm hosting the uh, Gay Porn Awards in Las Vegas <laughs> on January 21st with Shangela. If you happen to be in the Las Vegas area at the Planet Hard at, at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, oh. dun, 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 dun. yeah, come see me and Shangela. Come, and, yeah, come see us. Um, newcomer <laughs> is um, misspelled in all the categories. I don't know how that happened, <laughs> but, but wait um, a minute, because Shangela's assistant is a porn star himself. Is, yes, right. he yes. is. He uh, is Liam Ryan. Yes, and well, we're, I'm already <clears> getting screeners for every single film. I've watched so much gay porn every time I eat a banana now I spit on it. So you are, <laughs> you are watching all of them all to of make the sure. Screeners. Okay. All of the screeners. Wait, are you voting as well? Uh, no, I'm not voting. Oh, I just, just like wanna, the screeners. You, bone, you want to yeah. bone up on it. Yeah, I want to bone oh. up. Oh. <laughs> I'm doing that and I'm appearing with the Golden Girls at Casita del Campo <laughs> oh, this weekend it. with Jackie Beach, Sherry Vine, Sam Pancake, and Drew Drogi. I am guest starring as Anne Angela on <laughs> the Golden Girls. If you're in Los Angeles yep. and you've never been to the Casita del Campo yeah. Cavern Theater. You're yeah. missing it, everything. It, it, it's, it's in the basement. It's in the basement of a Mexican restaurant. It is. So yeah. you don't have to get dressed up. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a really good. Thing. You don't have to get it's dressed up. But, but you don't have to make an effort. But literally, it is the size of this studio here, yes. and they will pack 400 people yes. in it. Yeah. It I is s- a fire trap. I say yeah. without exaggeration yeah. that I have laughed harder in that theater yeah. watching yeah. productions like this yeah. than I have laughed at anything. There's not a dry seat in the house. These are like four of the stupidest gay people on the planet. And by stupid, I mean like, oh my God, I can't believe you're Saying and doing the things that yeah. you're doing right now. They're but, so funny. But wait a minute. So it's it's an actual episode. It's an actual episode verbatim that Sherry Vine has taken down by dictation. <laughs> so it's completely against the law. <laughs> it's completely illegal. I <laughs> uh, can't believe I'm uh, yeah, and, and we act them out. And and, and it, what episode and, is it? And Can you tell us what it was? Because well, uh, we know every episode. We're doing one, which is the sisters, which is the famous one where Nancy Walker came on oh, yeah. and played <laughs> Sophia's sister. Yeah, and I'm basically it? playing Anne Angela she's like she's Tony Soprano. <laughs> Talking like this the entire time. Wait, you're it's doing the second green. Uh, you're yeah. doing the Nancy Walker. I'm role? doing the Nancy Walker. Wait, role. You mean you rehearse these? I re- we yes. <laughs> We've been rehearsing for six weeks. That's genius. Yeah, I haven't worked this hard since the public theater on Broadway. <laughs> and then um, we're doing a clip show. A clip show. Oh, right. Bottle was, show. Yeah, it would be yeah, in yeah, cheesecake yeah. flashback. It's <laughs> right, genius. Right, right. They should have more clip shows on television. I agree. There should be a RuPaul clip show. There I, used to, I, that I, would I was be watching great. the Golden Girls over the holiday week. Yeah. And it literally every fourth episode is like a clip a show. Clip show. Oh, it was like, fake clip yeah, shows, right? Yeah. Like they hadn't really, they, they were right. just, Sometimes they, they were learn. original material, but they would be like, you remember that time we met? Or like they would they would recreate you the imagine? past. imagine like all the producers were like, I don't feel like fucking writing an episode. Yeah. <laughs> Let's write some sketches just, and get the hell out of here. Let's write a clip show. Golden Girls, Casita Del Campo, go to brownpapertickets.com. If it's anything like I saw Designing Women oh, at yes. the Casita and it was so hilarious. Funny. It was so hilarious. Funny. Alec Mappa, you always make us laugh. Aww. You do. You're funny. You make you you you. I once the 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 closest I felt to you, mm-hmm. other than right <laughs> yes, now, yes. I'm touching his arm. Was it in Detroit when we were in the airport? In Detroit, we, we were watching Alec, Diana Ross clips on YouTube. Alec hosted <laughs> that a show is every that we day did. with Tom. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, Wait <laughs> a second. <laughs> no, but you hosted um, Dancing with Dogs, mm-hmm. especially for the Animal Planet, about that. which you mentioned. Her. Career which, highlight. Uh, it was though. Yeah, it was. I it was. Love and, that show. and we yeah. traveled together. We had a connecting flight. How come there wasn't another one the following year? That was grumpy. Not a big ratings win on Animal Planet. It's huge on YouTube now. By the way, let's bring it back. Are Let's bring it, it back. Will you write that Let's down? I'm going to forget. Back. Thank I'm you, Blake. Bring it back. You. Dancing with dogs. Dancing with dogs. Yeah. Compa- it's like Dancing with the Stars, but with oh, dogs. It was so good. It was so uh, good. It really was fabulous. It was so good. All right. Um, let's move on to number three, James right. St. James. Number three. I uh, watched you on Netflix. Do you right. know about you? Why no. owe you? Why no. owe you? Okay. I know nothing. Okay, it stars Penn Badgley, lonely boy from Gossip Girl. Remember, okay. uh, one of the handsomest men on the planet, mm-hmm. and somehow he has gotten younger and better looking since Gossip Girl fifteen years ago. <laughs> Botox. I, I don't know what it is, but he is devastatingly handsome. He plays a stalker, oh. a charming, literate, 
fabulous stalker. That's the who, best kind. He works in a bookstore, mm. and one day this this beautiful girl walks in. She mm-hmm. says her name is Bex. They have this sort of meet cute, fabulous conversation. They're laughing. They're witty. And as she leaves, he starts having an imaginary conversation in her head, in his <gasps> head about her, saying, "Bex, you know, when we get together, you and I are we, and we're going to do this." And, da, da, and the whole thing is you, 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 you. He's talk. He it's the inner monologue the entire series, second person of him starting to him, stalk her. To him talking, and so then he goes on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, finds out where she goes to school, finds out about, you know who her boyfriend is, who her oh friends are. Oh my God, are. you're so turned on right now, Tom. So, I can see it. So like, hot, that's my right? kind of fella. <laughs> he finds out <laughs> where she cares. lives. She lives in this giant brownstone with this huge window and she's always having sex in the window and walking around naked yep. and he's like masturbating in the, in oh, the, wow. the gardenias out in front. Nice. Full frontal, question mark? No, no, no. But then he breaks into the house and he's and the whole time he's like, uh, Bex, when you and I are together, you can't dress like that, you Is whore. this a movie? Movie or no, it's a, it's series. a series. Oh a wow! Series. Stalker the series. Stalker the series, and it's all in his head. Is he's oh, is he realizes he has to alienate the friends. He has to get rid of. The, he has to murder the boyfriend. He has what? to do this. He has to. He starts getting crazier and crazier and crazier. He keeps getting creepier and creepier and creepier. The girl What's turns the tone out of to this? be. Is it funny? Is it is it's, it dark? Is well, it? that's just it yeah. because you you start off and you really like him. You think you're sort of vo- hoping that the stalker gets the girl, yeah. Yeah. and you're sort of like. You feel like conflicted. It's like the bad guy in Frozen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say it's kind of like <laughs> I Dream of Jeannie, where she's cute the first season, and then she's just a pain in the ass. Yeah. And then Master. her twin sister shows up. <laughs> but this this gets bloody. It gets creepy. Oh. It starts and, uh, and like it turns out that none of the characters are likable at all. Everybody is horrible. They all went to Brown, which makes sense oh. to oh. you know. I mean, trust fund say kids. No more. <laughs> Party school trust funders. Right? I love shows where nobody's likable. Not one I person love, like, in this comes out on in Philadelphia, where everybody's just a horrible person feels like home but yes. this, this is not a comedy That's it ends family. up getting very grim and very dark and by the fourth episode you were just like what the fuck is going <laughs> on how many and episodes are there there are 11 which is a lot That's it's, a it's, lot. It's, 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 a, it's a big commitment but i how do many think have you gone through i'm at six right okay. now he's very good um, you are it, committed he is their net he he i am the biggest net they should be paying he me. is the algorithm uh-huh. of wow. Netflix. Wow. James, James is the algorithm but it's just if if you were a gossip girl fan and i'm sure the the millennials and the the gen y and Gen Zs and Gen Xs and every were right. you really should watch this because it's it's you will see Penn Badgley in a whole new light and he really is a great actor and I this I, sounds I like one, one, one of those like like big like high concept premises that by the second season what do you do like they get yeah. married in the second right. season yeah and the third right. season they have a baby but she's, right. she's stalking the baby right now they're being stalked by aliens <laughs> it's, like, it's like crazy ex girlfriend where you kept thinking where is it gonna I mean it right, only has yeah. one season and here we are in season five and they keep right. reinventing themselves yeah, so maybe yeah. it right. will who knows all right that's you Y O U on Netflix. Thank yeah. you, James. All right, we are now at number two. Number two. Over the holiday, mm-hmm. everyone's watching The Bird Box. Everyone's going to the <laughs> movies. Everyone's staying contemporary. There's so many things to watch and to binge. And I am, it's Saturday night. It's raining in LA. Uh-huh. And I am watching Turner Classic Movies. Lovely. Oh, and yeah. I watch every week without exception, Noir Alley. No, which I, it airs I, I like the sound midnight of that. on Saturday, midnight on Saturday Eastern time, yep. nine o'clock right. Pacific time, right. and hosted by that handsome, wonderful man. Go ahead. And no, I can't remember his name because oh. my would you Ileana Douglas? I wish. <laughs> Um, look up his name because my computer died. But it's this guy, and he's, he 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 tells you he dresses forty. He dresses forties, yeah. and he loves more films. And the one, and because over the holidays, um, the the the, we, the last weekend, everyone was like, "Well, what did you do last weekend?" I'm like, "Well, I spent the weekend with Robert Mitchum." And Jane Russell uh-huh. and Vincent Price uh-huh. and, and Eddie Backus. And Eddie Moeller. Eddie Moeller is the host. Wait, wait, I Moeller. do want to say that Eddie Moeller's father was a famous um, boxing uh, um, a reporter. Was, yeah, reporter back yep. in the 1920s mm-hmm. and 30s and 40s. So, so he has that sort of like that vibe. Yeah. And I've always known what noir films are, right? They're black yes. and white, they have that lighting, yeah. but there's so many and they were done cheaply yeah. and they're usually really short. This one. And that style still exists today. Yes. Like whenever they like have li- uh, uh, the Venetian blinds, yeah. To cross somebody's face, yes. or you know, it's like that. That kind of genre was created. And they, 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 it's, the lighting dark. on it's amazing. Yes. They, they're dark. They're they're very you know hipster yes. l- yeah. lingo. Yeah. And there's always the dame. There's always like a yes. noir, yeah. 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 And there's certain actors that that this is funny. Jane Russell. You know the whole thing. Like you know, you, I remember Jane Russell from those Cross Your Heart Bra yeah, commercials. Yeah, 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 she yeah. was also with Marilyn Monroe and yeah. for and the Outlaw. But you always thought yes. But I always thought you know you see them old, you think like oh, but you just look at her in 1950, you're like oh, that's the most my beautiful woman ever. God. Yeah, yeah, and the like, bosoms. And Robert Mitchum yeah. is sexy, sexy as hell. Yeah. yeah, and it, like, like, like myself, Robert Mitchum's character in the movie was called his kind of girl. 
<laughs> and he's kind of girl. Yeah. And he and, and he's like he's a loner. He's yeah. a gambler. Yeah. He's got no friends, They're no all family. Damaged. They're all damaged. But, but he's it's got the, a heart of gold. Yeah, yeah the dame is the yeah. one, what he, gets to him. He one. runs into this rich woman, Jane Russell. Turns out she ain't so rich. <laughs> and they fly down because a gangster puts him up to it. Gives him $50,000 if he flies to this resort in, in Mexico, in Baja. You know why I know it's a resort in Mexico? Because as the plane flew, I saw a map with a line. Oh, I love that. Like, <laughs> I love how did you get that in Indiana Jones? Yes, whenever they traveled. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And now, they even, get wait, there. this is sort of a different thing because usually in Noir, it's usually in New York or the yep. mean streets of Los yeah. Angeles. It's or different to go Casa to a resort. Go to yeah. sort of yeah. rich person's resort or people go to disappear, gamblers oh, and whatever. Yeah. And Vincent Price is there as an actor who is like evading his wife and Jim Bankus is throwing all these great- Absolutely love it. He's, he's throwing like yeah. parties. And it was produced by Howard Hughes. Yeah. Okay. And the backstory is fascinating because it's a two hour, 15 minute movie. And most of our movies are like 70 minutes. Right, right, right. Because Howard Hughes films. became obsessed with Vincent Price. What? And so he redid the end of the movie. Was it a gay obsession? I wonder. It made me think. Because Vincent about, Price was handsome. And did they have a thing? Well, he was as funny as, as, as shit in this thing. So there's humor in this film noir movie because he, he, uh, Vincent Price is an actor who decides at the end he becomes the hero because he, in, in sort of in character, he takes on the mob. Huh? And that was a good thing. So, and supposedly they shot the last sequence, like it ended up being 80 minutes long and they kept it. And so it's, it was a crazy thing. Wait, it's, the last sequence the is la 80 minutes? The, the third act, because it's sort of like they, they're going the ship to get the the uh, the bad guy, because, oh, the, the plot That's is- That's astonishing, because gonna, back in the day, they would want people to go in and out. Yes. I want to I run this movie but as Howard many times. But Howard Hughes was obsessed, and, yeah. and, and they, for years, and, and I'm, I'm going to give away the thing, because but they want, what, they, what the whole setup is- A spoiler alert, 60 is years later? Yes, is they're trying to get to take Robert Mitchum's, a Nazi doctor is going to take Robert Mitchum's face off and oh. put it on a uh, gangster, so he can, the gangster- can take his identity and go back Wasn't that a States. remake with um, Nicolas Cage and John Travolta? Maybe. Maybe. Oh, yeah, face yeah. Off. Maybe. Face Off. But, and and th they talk about how they filmed the, 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 the fight on the ship. There's a yacht offside and it, they, they shot it again and again and again because Howard Hughes kept changing the, the, the bad guy and the bad guy ended up being Raymond Burr. Another Stop homosexual. It. Another homosexual. But I think film noir is so gayish because they were working under those uh, Hollywood codes mm -hmm. where they had to like not be too. Yeah, but it's all innuendo. Yes. Yeah. So it's all like yeah. sort of a gay. You know how gays had yeah. to have a language. You know yeah. how to. You know how to whistle. Put you, to put you with lips together. And blow. <laughs> exactly. Anyway. And like Peter Laurie in the Maltese Falcon, who's like playing a, a big homo. Like in one scene, he's practically filleting his yeah. cane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In it, like while he's talking to Humphrey Bogart. So it's, it's all in so, code, yeah. but it's so yeah. sexy and so amazing. Now, I felt like I got stuck in the 70s, which was in my thing, so I went to the 50s for okay. my last one. Um, that's uh, Noir Alley. There's one with Lucille Ball coming up this Sunday. I, I look forward to this. Uh, I do, too. I didn't know Lucy, Lucy had done a, a, a she Noir She did a couple picture. of them. Yeah. She, did, um, she was known uh, as Queen of the Bees. Side Street or something, <laughs> exactly. right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. all right. I remember so Fuller all Rush Girl. All right, we're <laughs> going to take a break, but don't go anywhere because we're about to re reveal the number one thing that made us go, <gasps> wow. wow, here on the Wow Report Radio, Andy Sirius XM. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. We are back. It's the Wow Report. It's Tom Campbell, James St. James, the amazing and the funny and my new best friend, Alec Mamba. Oh, we're going to hold hands and skip. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we've been counting down the top 10 things that make us go wow, wow. this week, and we have reached number one. Number one. Who's going to tell? Who's going to tell? I don't know. You go. I don't you know go. what we're doing. You go. Hit it. Lindsay Lohan's Beach Club, <laughs> MTV's new series starring Lindsay Lohan mm -hmm. as the proprietor of, it's a Vanderpump Rules, right? Yeah. For MTV. Yeah, yeah. And, and Lindsay runs it. And a bunch of young reality types uh, without their shirts on mm -hmm. are working are there. Are all the VIP hosts and yeah. hostesses. VIP and the, and yeah, the ambassador. Listen, yes, the, amb the brand ambassadors. I say go for an MTV genius idea. We're talking about it. But I have to say that on RuPaul's Drag Race, the show mm -hmm. we produce, uh -huh. you know, we do Snatch Game every year. Right, right. And we shoot in the summer and it airs like sometimes in the spring. Mm -hmm. And we, we want to sometimes do Lindsay Lohan jokes. And for years, right. I don't do them because I'm always afraid she won't be alive. In the oh. spring. Now, I so think it's very reassuring that she's alive I and think breathing she's on this show. I think she's stabilized now. Yeah. So, yeah. But there was yeah. a period where she was in real yeah. trouble. Yeah. And then there was that own show on the Oprah Network. Yeah. Lindsay. Uh, uh, being Lindsay Lohan or something like that. 2014. Yeah, yeah. Where it, 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 it devolved into like the second episode was a conversation on a speakerphone mm. where Lindsay was negotiating.
negotiating like more money to show right, up on set. Right, right. And Oprah was telling, "Come on, Lindsay, just show up." <laughs> and it was like, it was really? like wow. she was on a speakerphone. Yeah. It was you know, a I was on Ugly speakerphone. Betty the year that Lindsay Lohan was on, and, and she was supposed to be the Heather Locklear of our season. She was oh, going to be the villainess yes. of season two or three, and it was so hard to get her to the set that they just kind of went. Bang. So the fact that she's oh, showing yeah. up for work, so yeah. thank you, Lindsay. I know. Um, in Mykonos. Do you, do you have what, what's your what's your first impression? Um, it seems like a like a a formulaic sitcom, <laughs> kind of like you know, kind of like the ex Hollywood actress who was kind of a hot mess is now pulled it together. Yeah, and she has like her her partner is this uh a uh, uh, very kind of sinister gay Greek man, yeah, despicable yeah, hatted yeah, gay man who's just kind of like if you don't take care of my customers right away, you're out. <laughs> Lindsay's the good one. That's not me. <laughs> and then everybody else is absolutely gorgeous, and yeah. you. you it, it set up like the real world. They get them all drunk in the first episode and push them all in the pool. And then and then Lindsay shows up like, you guys all have to work tomorrow. <laughs> so kind of like to have Lindsay Lohan now be the scold. I know. To I now have Lindsay Lohan as the person that's saying, pull it together and be professional. She was like, it would funny. be like me showing up on set. And yeah. I was like, well, you did do that. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like an arsonist talking about fire safety. Right. Yeah. I'm stealing this from Variety, but the Variety yeah. recorder said that the actual kind of mechanism of the young people working is awful and formulaic. Uh -huh. He said, but if you watch Lindsay Lohan, thinking of it like the comeback, like the right, reality comeback, right, yes. and hear what, how she tries to engage the audience and what she thinks is clever to ad-lib right, right. is worth the, the price yeah. of it. But there's yeah. also a very weird disconnect when she's talking to the employees and she's, she'll, she, in, that, there was, in the beginning she's, she's asking this girl and she says, well, you seem very religious, don't you? And the girl is like, not really. And she's like, well, I'm glad you said that because I'm very religious and I, I meditate every, and she like, like there's Her no, talking point yeah, did, yeah. Did, did, had it's to like, be said. She's not even bothering to pretend it's a feed or two <laughs> yes. for my setup. Right, like it, what? Yes. Well, I'm very religious. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Bring it up. I'm from Washington, D.C. Really, I'm very religious, too. Yeah. And so the, it's, it's very interesting to watch her try and pretend to be a human yeah. being, yeah. like a regular person who can have conversations. She was always a wonderful actress. That's the thing that broke my heart. It's Working true. with her was that when, when, when she would finally get to the set and they'd yell action, you would go, she would light up from the inside. You'd go, that's why you're you. She's a big star. That's why but you're then, a star. But, but a lot of times, like with many child actors, like it, it's very natural when you're young, but then you get all the layers and layers and walls around you and right. I don't know that she can do we that anymore. We also get to see her family and the paparazzi. Oh, oh really? And that, we're just, no, 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 not in this show. I'm just saying we, um, we, we, we sort of see what's behind we, the yeah, Lohan we family. I don't want to stay at her place. No. No. Mm -hmm. But Lindsay, we love you and we're glad yeah. you're well and we Mickey want Mouse. you to keep, 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 keep on keeping on. Will you keep on. watching? Um, I, I haven't finished watching the pilot yet so the jury is out. I'm not as committed to uh, binge watching as you are. <laughs> something really has, no, something really has to you catch my attention. Yeah, your... no, like Shit's Creek. I watched one episode and now I'm on season four and I can't I stop watching. I love sad. Shit's Creek. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. And recently The Good Place. I started watching. That. I need to get into yeah, that. That's, that's wonderful. That's, that's, that's wonderful. On my, right. my bucket yeah. list. We have some yeah. stuff to see. Yeah. Now, speaking of TV you need to watch. Yeah. Thursdays on Bravo. Mm -hmm. I love Thursdays on Bravo because Why, uh, Million Dollar Listing LA, which is <gasps> it's the same people that you know and love from last year, but yeah. it's been totally revamped. It's fresh. It's exciting. It's star studded. You need to watch it. It's With my boyfriend, Madison Hildebrand. Oh, he, he comes and goes. He comes and goes. Okay. All right. uh, 9 p.m. on Bravo and begin Beginning uh, next Thursday on the 17th, uh, after Million Dollar Listing LA, is Backyard Envy, <gasps> which is about three best friends, two are gay, one straight woman, and they are expert uh, 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 landscapers in New York, and they're so fucking cute. Well, I was going to say, I was going to say, the, the, the takeaway from that is that the two guys are just these yes. instic studs who are just these big hot bear oh, types. I'm, I'm there. Just so I'm there. cute. I love watching hot people garden, and I think, <laughs> and and it's and they they do like they do the backyards of rich uh, rich people. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's fantasy. It's fantasy. Yes. Oh, backyard. Nice. Yeah, I think that's actually in a couple of weeks. So it's uh, Thursday, January seventeenth. I don't know what today is. And I do. I, <laughs> I don't know. Who I, I am. don't know where I am anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll be immediately following right. MDLLA. I feel like I said that but maybe i do i'm on so much lexapro i think i'm home watching this on Bravo. <laughs> i do also want to point out that we have a show on wow presents plus our, uh, our streaming service our streaming service yes it's called uh reading, reading queens. queens with psychic char margolish oh, and it's all what? yes who's really fabulous she um does all the drag race girls she does she does like five or six of them i can't remember i'm on it as well i i went in i talked to her the minute she sat down she starts throwing out th 
things. We were doing, I, I'm, I'm giving away something that happened here that she was talking about uh, my friend, Stephen Sabin, who had passed on this year. She said, he's right here. He wants you to know he loves you. Dark and lady. He, he did, and the minute she said that, the light went out. The light popped and went out. Nice. She said, he's here. The light goes out. Yeah. Do you see the remote? She, do you watch the hand, episode? You'll underneath. see me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been to Shar and she's dead. No, she's the real deal. Really? The real and if deal. we do another, okay. if we do another uh, batch, you have to come. Yes, yes, yes. It, it, it right. is. It yes. is freaky. Okay, I love stuff like that. So that that um, premieres on January fifteenth. Absolutely All right. love it. And because uh, and, and on behalf of Fenton, who's not here, I'm going to do one more plug. This okay. is shameless to say that RuPaul's Drag Con LA 2019, oh. May 24th, 25th, 26th, sooner than you think. It's the perfect you know gift. It's the perfect thing to it get is on. So much fun. I right? have it's the to most fun, and it is fun for the entire family. Yeah. And you just have to go to RuPaul's Drag Con. Dot com to get all the information and get your ticket. Um, until the next time, thank you, Alec Mappa. Oh, thank you, thank guys. You James thank James. you so much. Thank you, Blake. And thank, thank you, Fenton. Hurry back. And uh, until I, I think it might have been the best episode we've ever done. Don't tell Fenton that. <laughs> um, until <laughs> the next time, go out and do something that makes the world go wow. wow. Bye. 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 Bye.